credits to the buyer at closing. Did you know that when you're negotiating with a seller, anything is up for negotiation, the price, closing cost credits, that's what we're going to talk about today is how to know how much you can negotiate for a seller to pay essentially part of or all of your closing costs. So you can negotiate like a pro. I'm Jennifer Hernandez, lender since 1995. Welcome to my channel. If you're tuning in for the first time, I'm super passionate about real facts, no BS, everything mortgage. So let's get started. Closing costs are actually a combination of fixed costs when you're buying a house, regardless of the sales price and fixed costs are things like lender fees, title company fees, government recording fees, uh, research on appraisal survey. Actually, I'm going to put in the description for you a link to an actual government website called the CFPB, the Consumer Federal Protection Bureau, where they actually talk about closing costs. So you can read more up about closing costs. So closing costs, it's hard to pin a closing cost percentage per se, but usually let's say they're anywhere from three to 5% of the house you're buying, depending on the price of the house. Now that can really add up in addition to your down payment. So a seller credit can really help buyers get into a home with less money, but there are some restrictions that it's really important that you know about. So the first section of what we're going to go over is actually the government loans. So government loans are those loans that are sponsored by the government, which there's three types. So there's an FHA loan, Federal Housing Administration. There's a VA loan for veterans. And then there's a USDA loan, which stands for United States Department of Agriculture. So they all have their different restrictions. We'll put those links for you resources down in the description as well. So FHA and USDA loans both cap the seller credit at 6%. The VA loan for veterans caps the closing cost assistance at 4%. Now, it's important to note that a closing cost credit can never exceed what the actual closing costs are. So I'm going to say that again, and I'm going to give you an example. The closing cost credit from the seller and the realtor, by the way, if, if you get a realtor credit, any credits to the buyer, cannot exceed those numbers of the 6% and the 4% that I just gave the example of. So let's say that the price of the home is 400,000. Let's say you're buying a $400,000 home and let's say you're doing an FHA loan. The max seller credit is 6% of the price. So that's $24,000. That's a lot of money. Now let's say that the addition of your closing costs, your prepaid expenses, which would include like upfront insurance, taxes, setup of escrow, let's say that all of those things add up to $12,000. So you've got the $24,000 potential and you've got 12,000 that is the actual. You, the buyer cannot benefit from that gap of 12,000. So the seller credit has to match or be less than the actual closing cost. So that's really, really important to note. So next we're going to go into a conventional loan. So conventional loans are those that are sponsored or guaranteed by the GSEs, government sponsored entities, and those are Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. So conventional loans have some different limits. So if you're putting less than 10% down, so anywhere between 3% as a first time buyer, and 9.9%, so less than 10% down, is a 3% max seller credit. Now, if you're putting 10% or more down, your credit actually goes up to 6%. Now, there's a special bonus waiting for you at 25% down, and you actually could get 9% credit from the seller. So I'll mention again that the credit from the seller cannot dip into your down payment. It can only cover the actual closing costs, but you can, so, you know, in times like when I'm making this video, rates happen to be high. 
And there are times when there's buy downs of the interest rate that are available and that makes sense for the buyer. The seller credit can go towards, that's a closing cost. So it can pay for not only customary closing costs, but it can also pay for points, what we call discount or origination fees. So actually I've got a video about points. What are points? I'm going to put that here at the top. I'm going to put it on the card about what mortgage points are so you know if that's, that's right for you or not. Seller credits can actually pay for those, which is an amazing, amazing, amazing bonus. It's important to note two types of loans that aren't as common all the time, but jumbo loans, those are the non-conforming loans that are over the conforming limits. Those loans are limited to just 3% seller credit. And then there's investor loans. So if you're buying an investment property, it's important to know that 2% is the maximum seller credit that you're able to negotiate. So again, thank you so much for joining. Please watch our video at the end of this called a home buying process A to Z. Thanks for tuning in. Talk to you soon.